What was supposed to be a fun summer hiking trip turns into a disaster when a group of college students are hunted and brutally killed by a wild bear. The story I will present to you today is infamous in Japan for being one of the few cases of multiple people being killed in an animal attack, and has some valuable lessons we can all learn from in case we happen to stumble across a bear in the wild. This is the case of the Fukuoka University Hiking Club. The story takes place in the summer of 1970. Five members of Fukuoka University's hiking club were going on their annual summer hiking trip. They depart from their home city of Hakata on Japan's southern island of Kyushu and spend the next two days traveling by train to the Hidaka Mountain Range, located on the northern island of Hokkaido. After arriving on July 14th, they spend the next 11 days hiking across the Hidaka Mountain Range. And on the evening of the 25th, they were getting ready to make their ascent the next day to the summit of the mountain they had designated as their final goal. As they finished dinner and were resting, a brown bear approaches their campsite. At first, the group was amused. Bears do not exist in the southern part of Japan that they came from, and it was a relatively small bear, so they were having fun observing it up close and taking pictures. Eventually, the bear takes interest in a bag that had the group's food supplies in it, attempting to take the contents out. They couldn't afford to lose their food for the remaining days of the journey, so at this point, the group shoes the bear off and moves their bags inside the tent, just in case the bear comes back to try and take them again. It was getting dark, so they decide to go to sleep. Tomorrow will be a long day. Around 9 pm, the group is aroused by noises coming from outside. The bear had returned, and by the time they came to their senses, it had torn a hole in the side of the tent. They scare the bear off by banging their kitchenware and starting a fire. It was decided that someone should stay awake just in case the bear returns, so they take turns keeping watch for a couple hours at a time. Although they were supposed to sleep when not on watch, no one could rest easy that night. Eventually, the sun came up, and the group was relieved that they had made it through the night. Although they could head down the mountain at this point, they had come all the way across Japan for this. They couldn't turn back now. But as they were taking down their camp, the bear reappeared. They decide to take refuge inside their tent, but the bear was more aggressive this time, trying to tear down the tent itself. The group tried to hold on to their tent as best as they could. But eventually deemed it futile and evacuated out to the other side. They observed the bear from a distance, watching it tear down the tent and rummage through their supplies. At this point, the group decides to split up. Three of them will remain and try to salvage what they can from the camp once the bear leaves. The other two head down the mountain to call for help. The latter two run s into a party from another university. Who had also been attacked by a bear, most likely the same bear that attacked our protagonists. These students were from a local university. They knew how dangerous bears could be and strongly advised to head down the mountain with them. Our protagonists declined the offer, claiming they couldn't just leave the other three behind. The students from the local university promised to contact the local authorities once they get down the mountain. And the two parties go their separate ways. The two climb back up the mountain and rendezvous with the other three, who had managed to reclaim their tent and a portion of their original supplies. They relay the advice they had received from the local students that bears should not be taken lightly and they should leave the area immediately. However, there wasn't enough daytime left to make it safely down the mountain, so they decide to set up camp in a different location. And attempt to descend the next day, praying that the bear would not return. But fate was not on their side. The bear managed to track down their new camp and watched them from a distance. The five students, sleep deprived, starving, and terrified, were at their breaking point. 
Around 6 p.m., they make a mad dash down the mountain, even though the sun had almost set below the horizon. The hunt was on, and the bear immediately takes pursuit. No human can outrun a bear, and it wasn't long until it claimed its first victim. The other four heard their friend calling for help, but they were in no state to help, and kept running down the mountain. Eventually, they had lost the bear, at least for now, but realized there were only three of them. One was obviously gone due to being attacked by the bear, but another was also nowhere to be seen. One of the members had gotten separated from the group in the panic, and stumbled upon a camp left behind by another party. He had left a memo describing his experiences during that night. I threw a rock at the bear and hit its snout. I think it stopped following me after that. Found an abandoned camp. I'll spend the night here. I wonder what happened to the others. I can't sleep. The slightest sound of the wind rustling the grass scares me. I hope rescue is coming soon. The sun is coming up, but I think I'll stay inside the tent until it gets a bit brighter. I want to go home. Oh my god, the bear is outside. Have the other members made it off the mountain? When is rescue coming? I'm afraid. The fog is getting thicker. This was his last memo. His body was later found, torn to pieces inside his tent. The remaining three, unaware of the fate of their missing friend, were making their way down the mountain through the thick fog. As they were getting closer to civilization, the bear caught up to them. In an act of pure heroism, the eldest of the three throws himself at the bear, buying time for the other two to escape. At some time around noon, they run into a construction site, where they explain their situation and have the construction workers call for help. The local authorities were already aware of the situation by this time, as the party of local students had reported it to them. A search and rescue party was sent out, but sadly the other three members were found dead. The rescue party ran into the bear that killed the students and took it down. The body of this bear is displayed to this day in the Hidaka Hiking Center. As you can see from this photo, it is indeed a rather small bear, and one can understand why our protagonists underestimated the danger it posed. In retrospect, people claim there were three main mistakes made by this group. The first is, you should never try to reclaim something a bear has shown interest in. Bears are extremely territorial beings. Once they have hold of something, they will consider it their own property, and will hunt it down if taken from them. In this case, our protagonist took back their supplies from the bear multiple times, provoking the bear to actively come looking for them. Second, never turn your back and run from a bear. Bears will instinctively chase things running away from them, and a human will not be able to outrun it. It would actually be better to stare it down and back away slowly. Finally, and most importantly, they should have simply headed down the mountain on the morning after their first encounter. Sure, they may have come all the way across Japan to summit the final mountain, but it wasn't worth risking their lives for it. In the students' defense, this story took place back in 1970. The internet was not available back then, and people could not access information as readily as today. Considering that this bear was the size of a large dog, and that they were from an area where bears do not exist in the wild, can you really blame them for not evaluating its threat accurately? This story remains one of the most infamous stories of death by animal attack, and is often referenced when discussing bear encounters while hiking. It was a real eye-opener for people of Japan to be wary of wild bears, and it may have saved some lives over the half-century since it occurred. 
Would you have been able to survive this situation if you were put in their shoes? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching until the end. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss the next video. I'll see you next time.